Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in a powerful series, and I know this message today is going to bless you in a rich way. So get ready. God has a great plan for your life. Check it out. Easter Sunday, we know how to make you look good. So come and get your pictures taken. We celebrate together. Uh, what I love about pictures, it freezes a moment in time, and you can look back and remember everything good about what God had been doing in your life. They're, they're like memorial stones that are set up a reminder of what God does. So uh, take pictures. Freeze those moments. Celebrate what God is doing. All right, Susan and Kip, come on up. We got to come on up as we got a new family joining today. So we are so glad you're here and you, God has moved in your hearts to want to be a part of our church family. And, and here's the deal. He's been taking you on a journey in life and every part of the journey, he's been there because he determines exact times and places for us as, as his people so that we seek him, we find him. And, he, and it's, he stirs up in us so that more and more, I want more and more of you. And that he's brought you here means he wants to give you more and through you, he wants to give us more because that's how he works in relationship. It's all relationship. Relationship with him and relationship with each other for us to walk out and live out as God's people. So we thank God that you're here and we want to have a prayer of blessing. So Pastor Anthony. Amen. You say you want to feel like you want to cry? Yes. <laughs> he hears our tears. Amen. Amen. Yes. Tears of joy. Amen. So let us pray. Eternal God, we just come before you with thankful hearts, Father. We are thankful right now, Father, for the addition to your family, Father. We lift them up to you right now, Father, because they belong to you and they found a place where they can worship and draw closer to you. And we get to do it, Father, as a family together, where iron sharpens iron, Father, where we make each other better as we strive after you. So we thank you, Father, for the spirit, Father, as they come to First Lutheran, Father, as the smile and the joy that they have in them, Father. They continue to shine, Father, not only here at First Lutheran, but when they leave the, the premises, Father, that they spread their light throughout the world. So, Father, we just thank you right now for the addition to our family, Father, that where they're planted, Father, that they may blossom and bloom, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So God everybody get to know Kip and Susan Marable. They are Kip great. Kip and Susan. God's going to build us Welcome. together. So yes. Amen. God bless you. We love what God is doing. Yes. Amen. All right. Let's stand to our feet. Let's prepare our hearts to worship today. All right. Lord Jesus, we just honor you in this place. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. Father, you have been so good to us in all the gifts that come down from heaven from you. We want to acknowledge it and live in it in this truth that you are the everything and it all comes from you and for us to rejoice and be glad in you. So bless this time. Speak to us through your word. Continue to enliven our faith more and more on the inside that it gets to the outside for the world to see how much we love you, how we know you, and how we've been blessed by you that pours out to bless all those around us. So speak, Lord. We are here to listen. We give you all the praise. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Opening song, good, good song.
love us so much and we want that love more and more to be felt in our hearts and our lives so we're thankful for this place today where we can come and worship you we are thankful for your goodness in our lives you are full of love and compassion for all people your love for us reaches up to the heavens and it stretches across the sky your faithfulness endures forever it is for all people. And every morning, your mercies are new. Oh, Father, even when we feel the darkest night around us, even in the inner struggles, in the stress and the doubt, you are close like no other. So send your Holy Spirit among us today to speak to us so that we know and understand that deep, deep love that you have for us in Jesus our Savior. Teach us his sacrifice. Help us to know that your arms are open wide now because of what Jesus did on the cross. Help us to know that we can always come to you and find you and make a home in you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
it all behind. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is coming. Welcome to the altar. The Father's eyes are open wide. Forgiveness was God's will. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the altar. The Father's us to come to the altar. You may be seated. Oh, come to the altar. Jesus is calling. The scripture says, come unto me, all you are weary and he heavy burden, and I will give you rest. You say, well, what's at the altar? The song says, there's forgiveness at the altar. There's redemption at the altar. And there's healing at the altar. So come to the altar. 
See, a lot of times we can get caught up in theology. Try to figure things out in the Word. And there's nothing wrong with theology. But Christ is concerned more about neology. Yeah. To be in his presence, on your knees, on our knees, at the altar, crying out to him. He's asking us, come, whatever weight that you have, give it to me today. Don't leave here with, with it on you. Whatever weight it is, whether it's unforgiveness, somebody that you may need to forgive, maybe you just need to forgive yourself. Maybe somebody need healing in their minds spiritually, in their minds physically. Maybe somebody's lost, has drifted away from Christ. He's calling today. Come back. Come back. Come to the altar. Come to me. I'm here. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He's knocking today to come in to restore everything that's broken in our lives to mend the relationship with us and him and others and then it all can be done just like that just by giving it to him and he give us that peace yes situations and circumstances may seem the same but he give us that peace that make us Feel at peace. So let's go before the Lord and let's just, whatever's on our heart, give it to him. Whatever weight it is that's weighing you down, give it to him and leave it there. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we just come before you, just thanking you for who you are, our Lord and Savior, who sits high and looks low and sees all and knows all. We just come before you, confessing and pouring out our hearts to you, giving you all of our issues, all of our problems, any type of sin or weight or anything that's be easily beset us, Father, we give it to you on today. We repent from it. We make a 180, Lord, to turn and go up the opposite direction towards you, that our eyes may be fixed on you, Lord that we may become hungry and thirsty for you. We pray right now, Father, for relationships that need forgiveness. We pray for people that, that need to be restored, healed, set free, and delivered. Touch our bodies, Father, if it be us. Do a work on us, Lord, so we can become more like you. So we thank you and we praise your name, Lord, that we're able to come before your throne of grace and cry out to you. And not only do you hear us, but you answer us. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. No matter what weight it is that you had, no matter how heavy it is or was, if you gave it to him, let him handle it. Trust me, he's going to do a much better job than we could ever even think about. 
And whatever it is, we can let it go because guess what? He says, there is therefore no more condemnation. The enemy don't have anything over your head anymore. Once we confess it to Christ, it's over with. You are forgiven. Amen? Amen. At this time, the kids are excused for Treehouse Kids Church. Headed this way with the guys in green. Let's pray for our little ones. Eternal God, we just thank you right now for each and every one of them little ones, Father. As they go back and study your word and grow in your word, Father. May it take root in them, Father, as they grow up in this world, Father, that they continue to seek after you. In Jesus' name, amen. Those two little ones need a little more practice because they missed the basket. <laughs> Three in a row. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with my people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. No more. Mm. Amen. The epistle lesson, Hebrews 5, verses 7 through 9. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, Though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. In King Jesus' my name. Amen, amen. You know, I've been teaching this class on prayer, you know. According to your faith, it'll be done. Do you have faith that I, I'm able to do this? You know, he asked people all the things that we talked about with prayer. Here's another one. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of reverent submission. Lord, I submit and surrender it all to you. Amen. I invite you to rise for our gospel reading today. Powerful words from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, 
This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the gospel of our Lord. I invite you to bring your Connect cards up, or if you brought an offering, to bring it as well for the basket as we sing this next song to prepare our hearts for today's message. An oldie but a goodie, a familiar one, just as I am.
you, Lord Jesus, that we can come to you just as we are for the healing, the fullness, the life, the redemption, the forgiveness. But then you don't leave us there. You take us into the more of you. So have your way. Speak to us through your word. Empower that life that is life being lived in you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to give you a little secret. Some pastors, they love to preach. I don't. But I love Jesus. Amen. And people need to know. Yes. Having a microphone isn't the deal. It's knowing the one to talk about. Yes. And he gives, us, he gives us all a voice to talk about him. Yes. Just want you to know that's me. I ran away from being a pastor. One is, it didn't look like much fun. I saw my dad every day. Well, he was almost never home because he was working for the Lord too much. And then when he was, he was grumpy because church meetings usually don't go very good sometimes because everybody wants to say, we should be doing that, you should be doing this and that and that. But, but the Lord got me to come. But it's not because I wanted to be up front. It's because... He said, it's all about me. So today we're in this series called The Battles Begin. And this is why he is, so, he is so worthy. See, Jesus came into this world to battle for us. And going to the cross, he had to face all kinds of battles because people wanted to stop him. Peter said, no, I'll never let this happen to you. Jesus almost had to run him over. He was getting in the way. Everything Jesus battled along the way to the cross is the very things that you and I battle in life to live in him at the cross. Satan wants to keep us from the cross and everything that's found there. So today it's this. It's the battle within. It's a battle that takes place in our hearts and in our soul when seeking to do the right thing. When think, seeking, when seeking to do the God thing, when seeking to do the faith thing. Most of the time we don't see it as much of a battle because we really don't engage in it. We're hardly aware it's really going on. We don't, and then we don't give it the time of day that it deserves. But trust me, this battle is huge. It's so important. It's the battle Adam and Eve fought when tempted by the devil, Satan. God said this, you're saying that. Hmm, what should we do? You know what happened? They didn't do very good. And because they lost that battle, you and I have to fight this battle every single day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. Battle within? Yep. Paul talks about it this way. It's Romans chapter 7, famous words. He said, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature in here. For I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I want to do... For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I don't want to do, this is what I keep on doing. I'm struggling in this thing. For in my inner being, in the inside, I delight in God's law. I know it's right. I know it's good. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war. What does waging war sound like? A battle. That's what Paul's saying. It's a battle. Waging war against the law of my mind, making me a prisoner of the law of sin that work in my members. Then he said this, what a wretched man that I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? I keep losing. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's taking care of things through his life and death and resurrection. It's not about perfection, Amen. but it's about the direction as he covers me and he washes me and he cleanses me and he turns me 
and he encourages me, and he empowers me. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is really the help that God was promising through the prophet Jeremiah. Listen again to his powerful prophetic words. He said this, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. It wasn't because I did something. It was because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. He says, this is a covenant I will make with them. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their, on the inside. So they got it all the time. It's with them. They have exactly what they need. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And no longer will they teach their neighbors and say, know the Lord because they will all know them, know him from the least of them to the greatest. They will know he is and the law in their hearts, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. I will make them clean and whole on the inside where the battle is fought so they can win. As Paul says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that that is what you do. It's what you do for me. The good news is also that Jesus already fought this battle for us. He did it throughout his life, especially in the garden where in agony he sweat drops of blood as he prayed. As he said this, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Your will. See, the battle on the inside is really a battle of wills. Right? Lord, what do you want? What do you say versus what do I want and what I say? The battle is the battle of wills. The writer of the book of Hebrews tells us about this battle in Jesus. It gives a little insight into what's going on. He wrote, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears in agony to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of reverent submission. He said, not my will. He submitted to his Father's will. I know it's your will, Father. Is there any other way? But I submit to your will in reverent submission on the inside in his heart and son though he was he learned obedience from what he suffered people don't like suffering they run from suffering but suffering does good things if people never suffer, guess what? They'd say, who needs them? I got it under control. I can live however I want. But in suffering, Paul says, suffering produces perseverance. It's exercising inside of me so I can keep on keeping on in the faith and keep on going. Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. So in the battle on the inside, I got character. And character produces hope. And I hope it doesn't disappoint us. I know who I am and where I'm going. I know this world is temporary. It ain't going to trick me up. I got hope in who he is and what he's done and where I'm going and how I'm going to get there because he's going to come get me just as he promised. So he learned obedience through suffering. He went through all these things in his life. And once made perfect, it says, once it was complete, his time through this journey. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who, I'm going to say believe, but it says for all who obey. There's not a conflict between those two words. It's like two sides of the same coin. 
pull a quarter out of your pocket and you flip it, you got heads or you got tails, but it's the same coin. It spins the same, whether you put it in this way or you turn it over and put it in that way. It's the very same thing. Faith and obedience, they go together. Faith working through love, expressed in love. Love is that obedience. It's, it's what moves me. Your love moves me to live, and it's you doing it inside, and it comes out in this life. It's the beautiful thing about faith that it's not just talk. It's a life that comes alive. And it's walked out. We're going to hear more about that next week. But I'm not the same. My will has changed. He's made me alive. And Jesus, he did it all. Through all that he went through, he became the source of this salvation that completely changes us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. Without Jesus, what do you got? Nothing. With him, you got everything. Now to John chapter 12. Jesus himself gives us some insight into this battle. It starts off when some Greeks came to Philip with a request to see Jesus. These Gentile people, they came to Philip, I want to see Jesus. Why did they say that? Because they saw stuff is going on. This is amazing. Whether they saw it in Jesus doing it or in his disciples doing it, they saw the, the difference Jesus makes in people's lives and, and who he is. They were drawn to him. You see, when you and I are lights of the world, people are drawn to our faith in our life. They want to see Jesus. And we got something to say. Even when suffering, say, wow, it's all right. I know who I am and where I'm going. I know who's with me. I know how he works in this stuff. You see, since he's always working for good, no matter how bad this is, it's going to turn for good just as much or more on the other side. Because he's working for people's faith and their life in him and everything that he has for us in this world that he paid for on the cross, for us to walk in and live in as his people in the world, as bright lights, powerful witnesses to his glory and his kingdom. So they come with a request. We want to see, we want to see Jesus. Andrew and Philip tell Jesus, and when, he, when they tell Jesus, this is how Jesus replied. This is so amazing. He didn't say, oh, nice to meet you. His whole conversation all of a sudden shifts to his whole purpose in being here. He says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. How is Jesus going to be glorified? By dying. That's not our impression of glory. But it is his. Then he adds, very truly I tell you, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, nothing happens. It remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. He says, this is exactly what I'm doing and what I'm going to do. If I don't die, I just stay the Son of God, the eternal Son of God. But if I die, I'll produce many sons and daughters of God will live forever. It's what he does and what he did for us. And he takes this powerful truth of what we see in the world and he not only applies it to himself, but right away he turns and applies it to all of us. Because now he says this, very truly I tell you, Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. He goes from loving this life, 
this world, the stuff out there. And he contrasts us with hate it, which means I don't want the stuff of this world to taint my heart, my soul, the stuff going on on the inside. I don't, I don't want to be drawn into the love of the world where the love of the Father is no longer in me. I'm not here for this world because this world is passing away. I'm here for you, and I'm here in you, and I want you. That you are the real treasure in this world. This world was just a setup for this relationship to happen and to take place and to be walked out in glory for your name. Whoever loves their life, he says, it's just going to be a seed that sits and rots and dies and ends up being empty. But if you hate this world, your life in this world, and you die, you die to self, then amazing things are going to come out of your life for the kingdom. And you'll produce much fruit. When we die inside the self, this is what happens. These are the things that happen, the fruit that comes. We get eternal life. We get to follow Jesus. We get to become like him in this world. We get to bear the fruit that will last. And other people who come into the kingdom to become sons and daughters of God and to enjoy life in the family and to live forever with him in heaven, we get to produce fruit that will last when we die to self so that he can shine through. And then he adds this. When we die to self, even the Father will honor us. My Father will honor the one, he says, who serves me. First time I read that, I was blown away. <laughs> Father honors me. I mean, Papa, Dad, the, the guy up there, the real one who sent his son Jesus who became a human being like us, you know, I can see that maybe Jesus would because he understands our lives and, and maybe how hard it was to walk in it. But he says, my father will honor the one who serves me. Because all these things go together. When I die in him, I get him. And his life begins to live out and produce these things in service to him and his kingdom. Then he says, my soul is troubled. He's saying there's, there's still some of that battle going on on the inside. I'm troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I came to this hour. The whole reason I left my throne in heaven was for this hour was to die. The whole reason that I taught my disciples and they didn't always get it and, and went around touching lives and making them whole and speaking and teaching about the will of God and the kingdom and all these things was not just for that. It was for, for me to die. It's not good for me just to come in this world and say, well, that, that's enough. I think I'm, I've had enough of now and I, I, I want to go back home. He made his face like flint toward Jerusalem because this is why he came. He came to die. And so he says, Father, glorify your name. This is for you and your kingdom. I want to bring glory to you. And I love what happens. Father shows up and affirms his son. Son, I have glorified it. And I'm going to glorify it again. He glorified it when he was baptized. Up on the mountain, he glorified it. He's going to glorify it again when he rises from the dead. So powerful. And then Jesus tells the crowd, this voice wasn't for me. It was for you. 
that you understand really what's going on here, why I came, why I'm here, what the glory is really all about. It's about me coming to be the servant to lay down my life so that everybody else gets blessed in a powerful way. Because if I only live for me, it dies and it rots and it's no good. But if I die, everyone else can be blessed. Because I came to serve, not to be served. I came to give glory to you. This was told for your benefit, for your battle within. When the time comes when I'm lifted up, that you understand why I'm being lifted up. It's not an accident. It's not an oh no. I came for this very hour. I came for this very reason. I came for you. I came to battle and do what only I could do for you. So you might become sons and daughters of God. That you would behold the Father's glory in his great love for you. And to one day hear him say, of us, I have glorified your name and I'll do it again. Because the Father honors the one who serves him. Well done, is what he says. Well done. Good job, Anthony. Melissa. Good job. But I want you to know that the battle for everything, everything you can think of, is fought on the inside. Is fought and won on the inside. The battle for marriages. It's fought in here. It's a battle of wills. Who's going to win? It's the battle. Am I going to do your will or am I going to do my will? Will I submit and surrender? Will I love as you have loved me or will I continue to try to get my way? It's all a battle of wills. Will I do the right thing? Will I do the God thing? Will I do the faith thing? Will I trust him when things don't look like anything good can happen? Will I step out of my will? Or will I trust your will? I just want you to see. It's in here. And when he gets in here, right? Every battle begins to be won yes, in powerful ways because he works in us and through us. Say, so, oh, man, I love you so much. I thank you. I feel so much good. I don't even hardly notice that something bad's going on because I just want to love you and serve you and go for you. This is the battle. So here's the ding thing when I submit to God's will for my life, that's the secret. I can live a life of service because I want to. There's nothing I'd rather do. How can I not give you honor and glory for all that you have done for me? It's where our life be goes when we win this battle on the inside. Our life goes to want to serve, to bless. I have died, and I want to see others get what I got. I, I want to see Jesus lifted up knowing he will draw all people to himself. I will go for you. I will knock on doors in Malvern. And I'll love on people who answer the door. Amen. Guess what? They open the doors. Amen. Amazing. Secondly, as I submit to God's will for my life, I can live a life of gratitude. You see, it's where our minds go when we win this battle. My mind goes to, Wow. You did all this for me. I am so thankful for what you've done. It says, and be thankful. And whatever you do, do in word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is God's will for our life, to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances. Not only when it's good, even when it's not good. Because he says, I'm yours. 
You're mine. I'm just passing through. You're going to work something good from this. It doesn't matter what the, what's going on. I can give you thanks and praise because you saved me and you loved me and you've done it all. Here's another one. I'm going to go back one. I think Jesus said this. Um, I want to make sure everybody gets this. Whoever serves me must follow me. That's where Jesus went next. And where I am, my servant will be also. You know, when Jesus said, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age, he said, that's when you're making disciples. As you go, make disciples, and I will be with you always to the very end of the age. That's really the context, because that's when we're his. We are serving. We're looking. God, what do you have for me today? I want to surrender my will to you. What are you saying and what are you doing? Let me be a part of it. And we're always with him. And that's when life is good. I want to make sure we got that one in. The gratitude. I talked about it last week. You know what we're doing when we're complaining? We're agreeing with the, with the devil. We're bringing praise to the devil. Devil, you were right. He is no good. He's not a good, good father. Else he wouldn't have me going through all this stuff. And we're actually bringing praise to him instead of, Lord, I thank you. That you have called me to be your own. I rejoice in my suffering, as Paul would say. Because you did even more for me. When I suffer in your name, sake, I am blessed. It's okay. Because you said, great is your reward in heaven. That's where Father says, I want to honor this one. Yeah. Pull this one aside. Mm -hmm. So our life becomes service. Our minds are filled with gratitude. I can think of all the things to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, as I submit to God's will for my life, I can live a life of peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. I'm submitted to you. You will keep me in perfect peace when my mind has stayed on you. And guess what? Everybody else will look at you and say, wow, where'd you get that? Take me to your leader. <laughs> this is how we win. It's in here. It's just by saying you. Whatever you want. I'm yours. And I'm so thankful to be yours. And to live for you in this world. To give you glory. To see other people come alive. As I go low, so that you are lifted high and you draw others to yourself. So, Lord Jesus, come on in. I want more. Anybody else? Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good message, Pastor. The battle within, inside. I shared with uh, other services, uh, as Pastor was preaching uh, on Saturday, <clears throat> the battle within. You know, we always look at the enemy, and we put a face on the enemy. You know, sometimes it can be a coworker, your boss. The enemy can be uh, somebody that, or just a friend that you just fell out of relationship with when you're having friction with each other and you kind of see them as an enemy and no matter what the case may be you know but the true enemy as pastor was preaching is the inner me it's me you see when we submit to Christ and we have him in us, 
and he is love and if he's dwelling in us that's what we have to give out to love him and to love others it don't say love the good people matter of fact it says those that despitefully use you so it always comes back to us and once we figure it out that the battle is in here life becomes so much more easier because I like battles but this battle within here I can't do that on my own it's only by him his power to do the work and the change because I used to say this thing you know this is just this is just me this is just I this is just I am you know accept me the way I am that's the biggest lie the enemy can t ever tell anybody that this is just the way you are no Christ came that we may be changed into his image it starts in here amen so let us stand let us pray for the church battles begins within within here let us pray for the church eternal God we just thank you for your word on today Lord Jesus the battle within help us Lord to fight this battle within us father that we look within ourselves, Father, to become more like you. Father, anything that's in our life that's keeping us from that, please remove it so we can become more like you, Lord Jesus. Now, Father, we pray right now for those that know not you and the pardon of their sins, Lord Jesus. We pray that they get to know you whether through this message, through television, through the witness of your word, through one of us today. For you come that all might be saved. So help us as a church, Father, to continue to carry out the vision. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting. We just, you said in your word, by your stripes we are healed. And we stand on your word, Lord. We pray for those that are caregivers, that's taking care of those that are sick. Continue to strengthen them in the area where they're weak, Lord. Now, Father, I just pray for each church that's preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified, Lord. That we continue to fight the good fight of faith. No matter what this world throw our way, Lord. We know that this battle that we in, that we win in the end. So, Father, we just thank you and we bless you. We close out with the prayer that you have taught us to pray in case there was something that we may have missed. And that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to encourage all of you today to win big. Not at the casino in here so may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace I pray that today's message bless you in a rich way we're all about being committed to the mission being committed to Jesus could being committed to this life in him if we can be a blessing to you on this journey give us a call our number is 501-525-0322 we would have, love to have you join us on Sunday mornings live on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. 
We come on 11 o'clock Central Time. So God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again soon.